All right. Good evening, everyone. Hopefully this is working. I'm still seeing a black screen over here. Oh, there it goes. Ah, perfect. All right. So <laughs> hopefully what I'm seeing here is what you are seeing out there as well. Anyway, good evening. I apologize for the uh, no notice on this stream. Didn't really plan it. Didn't really set anything up. I just decided I was going to do it because I had some time and I hadn't done anything in a while. I hadn't even played in a while. Um, the, If you recall, my last stream, I was playing through um, Extreme, Extreme US, um, the PlayStation 2 game. And I was trying to, well, I played through all of the licensed uh, songs and then was messing around with the iToy stuff. Um, but I had been told that I needed to try mission mode, but apparently I needed to actually unlock mission mode first and it wasn't unlocked. And I looked it up and I guess the requirement was something like I'd play 40 songs or 60 songs or some number of songs before it would be available. And <laughs> I kind of ended the stream saying, uh, I'll probably do that offline and come back and, and, and come back on stream and, and sh show mission mode live. But I didn't do that. I <laughs> actually, this past weekend was um, FP Fest which was like a virtual convention for the uh, the movie series, the FP, of which there are two now. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, look it up. <laughs> the FP. Um, but, uh, and you'll either be like, oh my God, this is amazing. Or you'll be like, I don't understand this. And why do you like this? And either is fine, but... I don't know. I think it's great. And <laughs> spent the weekend uh, watching a bunch of live streams and hanging out in the chat with other people um, talking about those movies and had a pretty good time. Uh, although it was <laughs> the schedule was on Pacific time, which meant that things that were ending at midnight or one o'clock um, there, of course, was like three or four o'clock in the morning for me and uh, oh man it it crushed me it was <laughs> it was so late <laughs> but um anyway I, I think i'm mostly recovered from it now on what what is this wednesday um <laughs> but uh what i thought i'd do is uh get back on on stream and um take a take a look at uh mission mode i'll probably have to play some songs to get it unlocked but I don't know. It's something to do. Um, oh, I was going to say real quick, though, before I went live, I was uh, um, actually the, the whole thing about FP Fest is the computer that I normally the computer that I've been using to do these streams normally lives in my entertainment center up in the living room um, so that we can like play Steam games and uh, do whatever like PC stuff on the big screen in in the living room uh, but as it turns out that is also like a an okay machine or at least good enough to uh, to get these streams going and so I kind of commandeered that machine uh, most or lately <laughs> to do that but for FP fest I wanted to be able to watch the um, watch those streams on the big screen so I put I took the computer uh, back from behind the uh, DDR machine and set it back up in the living room for the weekend and I just brought it back down right before the stream and hooked everything back up in fact let me um, let me show you I took a picture because <laughs> here's what happened I got everything connected to the uh, to the computer I put it back behind the, the I put it back behind the machine and got everything connected and I went to you know, like turn everything on and um, like it, it bottom line it wasn't working and I was like what's what's happening I what did I forget to plug in in fact let me show you this so I took this picture um, 
to give you an idea. So this is the the PC behind the um, <laughs> behind the DDR machine. Um, it's a it's a little shuttle box. You can see the back of it there um, underneath the mixer, and then like you know a mile of spaghetti wires to just get all of this stuff plugged in because we've got the um, uh, we've we've got oh I don't know a bunch of we got a couple of different audio sources we've got a couple of different video sources um, we've got the the uh, the mini made plugged in to handle the lights for the for the stage um, so that the uh, home versions will you know make the cabinet light up and do all that kind of good stuff um, and uh, yeah so this is the giant mess that's behind the computer behind the machine and I was like plugging all this stuff back in and then I went to like um, oh I went to go look at my monitor which I will show you that picture as well this is actually kind of a picture of this space roughly from where the um, the camera that you normally see me uh, on the stage at this is this picture was taken roughly from that area um, but it's a little bit wider view so you can kind of see um, what is outside of the frame normally that you don't get to see so you can see over there like well you can see on the left and right I've got these two big lights set up um, that actually those actually I used for the very first time this past the the last time I streamed um, the first part of extreme uh, last week um, the the video the video quality of the uh, of me on the stage was kind of dark a little bit grainy I wasn't real happy with it and so I, I I got these lights out as it turns out I actually have had these lights for a long time um, but I haven't been using them because it's a really old kit and they, the the kit includes for each of these lights a um, a 250 and a 500 watt incandescent bulb, um, and they are just absolutely lava. Like they are so freaking hot um, that actually they've uh, <laughs> on a previous use of these these lights it melted part of the little umbrella diffuser. Uh, on one of them because it's just so hot and it's like I don't really want to play with all that heat and everything and so I started looking for a new light kit and then while I was like shopping you know online I was like <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of this before I was like hey idiot why don't you just put some LED bulbs in it and you'll be good so I went to my <laughs> closet where I have LED bulbs and I just screwed them into these lights and yeah that works great so, duh. <laughs> but at least we've got light now. I think the, the video quality looks way better. Hopefully you do as well. Um, anyway, you can also see over there on the right-hand side is the actual, like, computer. The, that's where the monitor is, where I can see what's going on uh, with the PC. And so what happened today is I got everything hooked up, and I went to the monitor here. Um, let me turn this back off. So, like, you can see the monitor would be right here, but it's normally off, off screen, so you can't see it. And I was like, turned it, <laughs> turned the monitor on, and I was trying to, you know, get the computer started. I was like, why isn't this working? What did I forget to plug in? And I, like, walked around looking at the wires behind the thing and kind of puzzling about it first for probably I don't know two or three minutes, and then I was like, oh. I'm an idiot. I didn't turn the PC on. <laughs> so yeah, I like literally somehow managed to get everything connected correctly. Um, but then I just didn't turn it on because I'm dumb. So <laughs> anyway, I got that fixed. Um, and, uh, I should be ready to go. So with that, uh, that was my almost 10 minute intro of me just rambling about stupid things but uh i guess i'll get this uh get this stream started like i said i didn't advertise this at all didn't schedule it i haven't let anybody know that i was going to do this so 
maybe nobody's even going to watch. I don't know. But I felt like playing. If somebody tunes in, cool. Hopefully you'll hit me up in the chat and say hello. And, oh, I see uh, Harold Hart says, you have a great collection. Love your videos. Thank you. I Great. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> All right. So now that I talked for like 10 minutes, I kind of want to drink. All right. Back at it. Here we go. And oh, OK. Well, I guess mission mode is unlocked. <laughs> I, I'm not sure why. I, I guess I'm not complaining. That's fine. Um, I don't know if I had just by accident maybe completed the requirement right before I stopped playing last week. Um, that's cool. Let's see, what does it say? actually say like oh yeah mission mode unlocked does it have a date does it say when it doesn't but okay that's fine um <laughs> sweet uh, so i guess uh, select is uh exit which my select button is conveniently in the coin door and by conveniently, I mean not convenient at all, but... Oh, well. All right. Well, let's try this out, I guess. Cool, I guess I don't have to play anything else. I'll just jump right in. So I... Select the start. Don't know what I'm getting myself into here. Single play. If your dance gauge runs out, then it's game over. Okay? That seems pretty straightforward. Don't fail. Oh, on light. Great, cool. Oh, and it doesn't even play the video? That's kind of sad. So it's not going to make me play the whole song. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I did it. Alright, number two. So it, it won't let me skip ahead, right? Yeah, okay. I didn't think so. so. So far, so good. Oh, what is this? Oh, am I, am I uncovering a picture? Okay, I see. Clear with more than three and a half million points. All right. Okay, let's go. You're doing pretty good. 
This isn't the normal chart for this, is it? I'm gonna throw up and fall down here in a second. Oh, thank goodness. That was... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Uh, you can unlock a new mission. Okay. That's cool. So I, this mission can be unlocked. What's beeping? Why are you beeping at me? Unlock this mission? Sure. Okay. Did I have, like, enough points or something to unlock that? Did I just, like, spend some fake money? I don't... I don't even know. Whatever. I can... I can play it. That's fine. Oh, don't get... Don't get almost or boot. Alright. So it's basically an Oni. It won a partial song Oni course. <laughs> All right. I feel like I'm on a treadmill. <laughs> there's, there's no, oh yeah, there's no difficulty, it's just, alright, okay. I'm sure this is a case of, it gets harder. gonna go in order, I suppose. Okay, so... I must have some kind of, like, currency that I'm spending to unlock those? I, I don't know. I don't see it on screen, but maybe I'm just blind. I guess I could read the manual.
hit OK on all three zeros. That actually might be slightly problematic since my uh, stage does not hold freezes that great. But if they're single freezes, it should be all right. Or maybe I just suck and <laughs> screwed it up. Sigh. Sigh. Cute. Right. Retry. Dear Brian, don't suck. If you suck, you have to keep listening to Slick. One slightly tricky thing in there. Or stealth. Or not stealth, um, hidden. Or whatever, what is this called? I assume this is, yeah, because the confirm doesn't come up right away. I'm guessing it's loading there. Did I? I didn't read the direct. I didn't read in in directions, did I? <laughs> what did it tell me to do? Don't step on any arrow simultaneously. Big brain, read the instructions. Good job. <laughs> Can I step on one of them? See, it's still counting those misses, even though they're intentional. <laughs> All right, that's funny. Why don't I read this time? Don't get the following results more than three times. Almost reboot. All right. Don't suck. Got it. Oh, well, that changes things. I am pretty terrible at reading reverse. I mean, this is slow enough and easy enough that it shouldn't be a problem, but... Like, on extra stage, it's usually like, Well, <laughs> I'm done. Tells me maybe one person is watching. If that's true, say hello. Oh, 
place so that the dance gauge is below 10% when you finish. Okay. Don't fail. Got it. Oh, number th that was number 13. Get NG on all freeze arrows. Okay. So, this freeze arrows. So you have to attack them, but then let them go, I guess. Gotta get off them quick, I guess. Oh. Wow, okay, this one's actually proving to be slightly challenging. Don't get almost in there, okay. Don't miss stuff. That's hidden, if I recall. And at that slow tempo, that's actually a little bit hard. Don't mess up. Got it. Mods. Wow. You know, those things that I almost never use.
cruising right along here. Oh yeah. Don't clock me. Okay, that's interesting. I can definitely see how if that was a more difficult chart, that would have been challenging. Because I definitely use like the position in the columns. To be able to read. I guess, I, I don't know why it doesn't tell you on this screen, like, obviously it tells you what the goal is, but it doesn't tell you what, like, modifiers it's going to use. I guess it just wants to surprise you. Okay, Are you ready? Let's start. Oh, that's tricky. Let's read ahead on that. Step off one A B unit arrows with the following results. So step on eighth notes, but not other notes. Okay. Hey. Also, hey. Okay, Are you ready? Let's start. Two, three, two, one. Okay. Okay, you ready? Let's oh, you know what? I don't. So you know what, I don't use solo arrow colors, or rainbow I guess they call them now. So like, it didn't really occur to me that that was uh, just a uh, step on the blue ones. Or pay attention better too. Okay. Okay, you ready? Let's stop. Two, three, two, one. Not sure if I missed one of the eighths, or I think I accidentally tapped one of the um, one of the quarters, one of the on-beat arrows with my uh, heel there. That's if, if you notice, I was like trying to like stand on the metal uh, so I wouldn't accidentally hit one hit hit panels, but uh, that that is an awkward way to play, or at least an unfamiliar way to play for me. Oh, uh, yeah.
Okay, so those freeze arrows are eighths. And I'm just, or was that last one not? And I don't even know. <laughs> So that one was not. Wow, this is actually slightly tricky. Supernova 2 missions are hard. All right, well, um, <laughs> I am not that far yet. I'm still on extreme. But I should get there eventually. I didn't quite catch if like stepping on one of the red arrows or on the on B arrows was a, like instant fail or if I just happened to be only on one life every time that happened to me earlier but yeah that was actually slightly tricky all right and I get to feel like a noob where I'm like must stand in the center don't want to hit anything else ah. You can only step on arrows simultaneously. Step on two arrows. Okay, so only jumps, but heavy difficulty. That's interesting. That's a that's a new one. Oops, missed one. Okay, not, not bad, not bad. All right, last row. Clear the song with a C. Okay. to see okay cool <laughs> I wasn't quite sure it's like how many do I need to miss that many oh I you know I didn't even read. 
what what was what was the goal? <laughs> I'm not that was good. Don't get the following Oh okay, so just play it decent. Got it. Alright. I should have just kept going. DDR Max 3 on Step Mania. I, do, I don't really play Step Mania hardly at all. Um, hang on one second. Pretty much the only thing I've ever actually used Step Mania for is uh, like practicing uh, freestyle routines. Um, since you can like isolate different sections and like repeat them over and over and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it was kind of handy for that, but gosh, I haven't done that in a decade. So like, I don't even have a working Step Mania installation anywhere at the moment. So, um, I won't say I won't do that, but I'm not going to do that anytime soon, at least for the, the moment. Um, I'm trying to make my way through all the uh, PlayStation, PlayStation 2 games, which is a decent amount of content. So it, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a minute before I get there. Um, and I've got a couple other like goofy surprises in mind too, of other dumb things to do. So um, you can bother me about it again, but I, I'm definitely not promising it anytime soon. <laughs> Keep the dance gauge below 30%, okay? Does it start below 30%? Is this like instant fail? <laughs> it did start below 30%. Okay, that's fun. Don't you poo me. Okay, that was basically the same as the end at 10% before that, that, that we did earlier, so. All right. Penultimate. Get 75 perfect singers. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Oh, on heavy. Okay. Oh, on wave. Sorry, that's not wave. That's um. <laughs> Why can't I even like remember any of this stuff anymore? Um, Cause wave is that um. That's accelerate. I don't even remember what that's called. Do you remember what that's called? In the chat and the one where there's no arrows at the top, the, the arrow containers whatever that's called, I forget that too, so. 
struggling today. Probably not just today, I'm struggling in general. Clear with points. Oh, two and a half million and three million, okay. Oh, at least I can see. Did I score too many? Was that too many? Okay, so it wasn't too many. I guess I just failed. Okay. That's that's fine. Oh! Between two and a half million and three. Did it figure that I are like I couldn't possibly do it at that point? This is what all of these like intentionally do bad in some way are kind of hard because it's like I don't really know like how bad I need to be. I guess I just failed before and I, I failed again because too many points. Too many. Okay, so play less. You forgot to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, um... That, that's rough. I don't even know. I guess I can, like, play a normal game after this real quick and just see what the mod menu looks like. Okay, so, gosh, this is, it's kind of a small margin, like a million points, but not, don't, but don't fail. Space that out a little bit more or something. I was close there though. Like I was still under oh no, it's three million points. Oh, it's only five hundred thousand margin? Like range? Oh that is that is rough. It's the keeping it alive part, okay. while still like intentionally missing a bunch of stuff that's hard. I bet there's a trick to it though. It's probably like, hit all of the blahs and then you're good, but I'm not, not, uh, not privy to what the blahs are right now. I also generally don't play for scores, so it's like I don't have a real good feel for like what uh, what is what the value of anything is, so like misses or hits. Like I, I'm usually just like playing, having a good time. Did I pass the song? Yes. Cool. No. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm good. Like that's that's enough for me usually. <laughs> Letting too many go. Letting too many go. 
Wow, I'm going to be stuck on this one for a minute. Can I do like just left and right or just up and down? Would that be enough? Nope. That's definitely not enough. Hmm. Maybe just up and down? That's, uh, that, that has some potential, like, I'm gonna have to, like, make, add a little bit more, but that got me a good, that was a good start, I think, at least. watching my score. Oh, too high anyway. Do I have a, a Vimani PC? I do. I do have a PC that will play the PC games, but... So if you're asking me, if you're telling me I could run Step Mania on that, yes. Yes, I know. But I'm probably not going to make the effort to actually, like, get all of that set up right now. Um, just... I don't know. I, I've never really been into Step Mania, honestly. Um... Like, personally, my feelings on Step Mania are, well, my, f how do I explain this? So, like, what I like about DDR is just, like, the fun factor, and I like, I, I like kind of the whole package, um, it, and, like, its personality is a big part of that. So, like, I like the announcer, um, I like some announcers better than others, but, like, I like the fact that the announcer is there. Like, I like all of the background videos. I like all of the, you know, I like the lights. I like all of the things that just kind of make it, par that, that are part of the experience that aren't necessary. They're not necessary, but, but they make it better. And uh, at least for me, like, I love that stuff. And so to me, Step Mania is either missing that stuff, and it's just the base game where, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm hitting arrows with my feet. Cool. And, and don't get me wrong, like, that's fun. Like, I like that. But, um, or it's, it is doing all of those things, but it's basically just emulating what DDR was already doing anyway. And then at that point, I guess I just play DDR. Like, um, and then, like, I get it. You know, Step Mania, you can have all the custom songs and all that kind of stuff. And, and that is cool. Like, I, I like that. Um, I like that aspect of it, but the, the reality is, like, I just, I kind of just want to play, like, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to go through the effort to, like, collect all this stuff and, and, and do all that, and, and the, the truth is, like, my skill level is, eh, it's okay, so, um, and I know a lot of those custom charts are, like, very difficult, and, and that just stops being fun for me pretty, pretty rapidly, um, and, and the other thing is, which the whole, the whole reason I'm playing through all of the uh, PlayStation and PlayStation 2 games right now is because, you know, in the 20 years that I've been playing DDR, I actually haven't played most of these. Like, about half of them I, I owned, but I just never played them. I was always playing the arcade stuff. Um, and then uh, it, it, it dawned on me recently that, like, 
the the home versions have a lot of um, licensed songs and features like mission mode that are not in the arcade and I was like oh that's that's cool that's like that's new to me that's additional content that I can play around with and, and have fun and so that's that's what I'm doing so like the idea of adding step mania on top of that do I does it have uh, even more content absolutely 100 percent but there is so much content in you know like the cs mixes and even the arcade mixes especially the newer stuff like anything after supernova 2 honestly like i've played it um you know like x x2 x3 ddr ace all that stuff like i've played them but not a lot so there's still lots of content in those even that i've just never played so i'm not like itching to to get even more anytime soon so i i don't sorry i'm <laughs> that was my long diatribe i'm not trying to like shit on step mania or anything like it's fine i get it i don't know i understand why people like it it's just it, it's not um it's not high enough on my on my radar it's not like high enough on my list of things to do where there's so many other things that i could be doing first so um sorry <laughs> I am not uh, like I said. I'm not saying I'll never do it, but I'm not. I'm definitely not going to commit to it anytime soon. Uh, anyway, you said you have DDR arcade data. X2, X3, 2013, 2014, 2020. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Like I've I have some of those, and I've played some of those, um, but just not not that much. And then the other question is, would I consider getting a pump it up machine? The answer to that question is, let me uh, just briefly here. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yes, I absolutely would uh, consider pump. In fact, I already, I already have. Um, the. Um, I will probably, I would like to do some Pump It Up streams uh, at some point. I just, um, just haven't, haven't gotten to it yet. I've really, I've really only, um, I've really only gotten into like doing videos and streaming this year, mostly because COVID, it's like eh, stuck at home. What are you gonna do? Find something to do. <laughs> so, um, so that's that's really what's led to all of this. So I, I'm fairly new to to all of to to all of this th this. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I would definitely like to get uh, to do some some pump stuff. The truth is, I actually like pump better uh, than DDR. Uh, I I mean, I started playing on DDR and I I love it. Like, don't get me wrong. Um, but I tend to like a lot of the, uh, I tend to like a lot of the music in pump and I tend to like, um, the patterns in pump given the way the arrows are positioned. It, it forces you to do a lot more movement within the box, um, than, than DDR does even in like singles mode. And like, I love that. I, you know, I don't, I don't play with the bar. I don't bracket because that kind of stuff is boring to me. I want to move like I want to you know I love crossovers I love you know streams I love patterns where like I have to kind of move around and and you know if you get it backward you're screwed and when you get it right you're like oh sweet like <laughs> I got that and it's 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 fun so yeah pump awesome love it definitely want to uh, play play around with it um, I, I just kind of um, again like I was saying before my skill level is okay. Like, I'm not an awesome player, I'm not a terrible player. I'm just fine. Like, I'm always just having fun with it. So, um, because of that, I'm always trying to find something that's sort of like unique or unusual or goofy um, with these videos and streams. Um, so, like, right now I'm playing the home versions, but I'm playing it on an arcade cabinet. Cause that's different it's like it's not something that most other people are doing and so I'm, my hope is 
that's interesting to viewers because it's just something different. Um, they're not tuning in to see me, you know, triple A, 55 songs or whatever, because that's not going to happen. Like I have zero triple A's because I'm don't, I, I don't play, I don't play for that. It's not how I play. Like I'm not that good and I don't really care to be. So eh. um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's my thought there. Um, what did you're still chatting? Cool. Uh, do I like legacy DDR stuff rather than the newer stuff? What's my opinion on e-amusement? Um, do I like legacy DDR stuff? Uh, I mean, I guess y yes, only in that like I'm more familiar with it. Like I started playing the first DDR I ever played was, you know, DDR US 1.5 mix at a game works in an arcade, you know, um, and then they got DDR USA, and we played the heck out of that like all summer that that year. That was 2001. Uh, well, 1.5 was 2000, and then USA was 2001. And uh, you know, and then of course the the one the one that I didn't play very much in the arcade was Second Mix. Um, I'm not even sure if I ever played Second Mix in the arcade. If I did, maybe like one time. Um, but like third mix, fourth, fourth plus, fifth, uh, max, max two, extreme, like all of those just played the bejesus out of all of those for, you know, those first, like, what was that? Three years, I guess, of DDR. Um, and then, of course, they took a break and we didn't get Supernova for like two or three years after extreme. And that was actually when I started playing Pump and... I, at that point, like by the time Supernova came out and Supernova 2, like I played them, but I was way more interested in playing Pump at that point. Uh, and so that's what I did. Plus a lot of the DDR machines local to me had kind of gone away. And so it was easier to play Pump. Um, so that's, that's my story. So yeah, definitely like after Extreme, what I've played in DDR has like the amount of the amount of Supernova, Supernova 2, um, X, X2, etc. has just been like declining this entire time. Um, in fact, I would say X... By, well, shoot. By the time I got to X, I would say X, X2, X3, and the, the two DDR, like 2013, 2014, so the, those, I have played almost none of those. I mean, I've played each of them a little bit, but probably, you know, less than an hour each. Um, it wasn't until uh, Ace came out that I have gotten into, like, I've started playing more modern DDR. But even even Ace, I just haven't played very much of. Um, and I have not touched, I've, I've not had an opportunity to play um, A20 or Plus yet. So um, there it is. But, like, do I like Ace? Yeah, actually I do. I, I, I think it's fun. Um, I, I miss the Dance Mania licenses, although I, there's some of them in there. Uh, I know a lot of people kind of kind of shit on the musical selection in, in DDR now. Uh, I, I don't even really know what all of that is. I mean, it's all like goofy J-pop stuff is what it sounds like to me, uh, or a lot of it, and like it's fine. Um, I mean, I guess that's personal taste. I kind of like shitty music, so whatever. <laughs> I love, like, shitty pop music, so it's totally fine with me. Uh, <laughs> as long as the patterns are fun, I'm good. Like, uh, as long as it's not, like, you know, nails on the chalkboard grading, I, it, it's probably just fine with me. Um, so, so, yeah, that's... Uh, Wow, you're you're asking some good questions, or at least you're getting me to talk. Although I feel like I've been talking a lot on this stream, like way more than I normally do, um, which is fine. Like that's actually what makes this kind of fun for me is just, you know, having people to hang out with, even if it's virtually. Um, thanks, COVID. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, what's my opinion on e-amusement? Uh, like I love the idea of e-amusement. Uh, I have not. I've not had the opportunity to use it very much. Like I have a card, but none of the arcades local to me are on the network. So 
Uh, and in fact, at this stage, <laughs> there's only like one or two DDR machines that I even know about, um, like in public locally. So, you know, I'd have to go to like Chicago or, or, you know, I have to travel two or three hours to get to a machine that was on network. Um, and like I said, I have a card. I, I take it with me when I go. Although of course, since it's all like Japan time versus us time, it's like, I feel like whenever I'm in Chicago playing, it's always maintenance time. So I, I never get, <laughs> I, I don't get to use the card that much, even when I'm there. Um, but yeah, like the, the concept of it, you know, being able to do all the special events and record your scores and, you know, challenge challenges against other people and all that, like all that, I think it's super cool. I just haven't, I haven't had very much opportunity to actually do it. So that's, that's my thought on e-amusement. And then what about the DDR cabinet types? Do I like the newer ones or the older ones? Um, my favorite is the, the Japanese X cabinet, the black one with the LED light towers on the side. I just think that one is so cool. Like just the look of it. And like I said before, you know, I love like the presentation of, of these games. So, you know, flashing lights and, you know, big picture and all the, you know, gigas and who's it's and what's it's and the, uh, like all of the things that are, like I said, not necessary but just kind of make it an experience. Because, like, when it comes down to it, like, DDR as a game, in fact, most of the Bimani games, they're all really simple. Like, it's, you know, hit a button or a thing or whatever when this line lines up with this line. Cool. Like, that, in concept, is not, there's not much there. Um, and, like, graphically, you know, DDR has never been, like, super, you know, flashy, Actually, Pump is way more flashy than, than DDR, in my opinion, um, as far as like graphics are concerned. So, uh, and, and you know, and that's fine because like, while the game is simple, it, it's also fun, and and that's great. But they've obviously at least used to you know, put in the effort to make the cabinet an experience in itself. Like, obviously, you can play, you know, DDR on a plastic mat you know in your living room and and that's fun but it's it's just it's not the same thing it's not the same thing as you know all of this um and all of this is part of it for me which is the reason i have one in, at all um because i i did like when i first started playing ddr i went out and i got some soft pads and i was playing them and, and i was like yeah this is fun you know but it's not really the same i don't <laughs> it's it's not, not that not that cool so it's like oh let's see if i can get a cabinet and i did and that was a very long time ago now but um uh so as far as uh uh what did you say uh the the usa ddr x and x2 cabinets are are barf yeah yeah especially x the x cabinets um on, honestly like so all the us cabinets uh supernova supernova 2 um, those were fine. I, I don't like them as much as the, the Japanese, like, f first and second gen cabinets. First gen being, like, this one, like, the old school, you know, like, the OG black cabinet. Um, second gen being the red cabinets. Um, so, uh, like, the, the Betson Supernova and Supernova 2 cabinets, I think those are fine. Um, uh, and, uh, but then, like, the X cabinet is just absolute trash um and the x2 is slightly better but still not great uh but the one thing that all four of those cabinets have that the japanese cabinets don't have which i think is actually pretty cool side art like the japanese cabinets they're all very like minimalist it's like hey we got we got the ddr logo here and the rest of it's black like black black you know nothing obviously they had the pops of course you know with each mix um which i don't have any of them on on my machine right now but i mean those were nice but that side art the supernova side art supernova 2 the supernova like the red side art and the supernova 2 the the blue side art that's cool um the x cabinet even though the rest of the cabinet was pretty trash like 
that side art was cool. Like, it looked nice. Um, I don't remember if they had different side art for X2. I don't, I don't recall, because I know that they changed the stage, but not really the cabinet part of it. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how that went, but, but anyway, yeah, side art. Um, and how has my cabinet held up through the years? Um, f uh, fine. Like I, so I bought this cabinet at the beginning of 2003. So that's how long I've had it. So over 17 years now. Um, when I first got it, I think I, uh, of course, back then, you know, the cabinets weren't like, like if you're buying a cabinet now, especially a first gen cabinet, it's 20 plus years old. So unless it's literally just been sitting in a warehouse for this entire time, it has been played to, to shit. <laughs> like, um, unless you're buying it from somebody who's had it a long time, like me, I suppose. But otherwise, like, if it, especially if it's been in an arcade for all this, this whole time. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be pretty... It, you're almost guaranteed that it's going to be beat up. Um, and uh, hang on just a second. I'm, I'm looking at stuff. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> Answering questions <laughs> anyway um what was i saying oh yeah so yeah any especially first gen cabinet that you're buying now of course is just gonna have high mileage as i say um and uh but when i bought this one um i bought it as a fifth mix it was in pretty decent shape like it, it had definitely been played um a reasonable amount but it was generally it was working like it was working 100 percent when i bought it and i think the i'm trying to remember like i cleaned it up a lot originally when i first got it and i did replace all of the sensors and beyond that i think that is all i really did and since then other than just like wiping it down occasionally um i really have done nothing uh, a lot of that's out of laziness but I mean, in in home, uh, and especially since I've had it for so long, like, I don't, like, this year has been, in addition to starting streaming, it's also been kind of unusual for me, because, like, I don't play that often anymore. Um, I know that seems silly, but I just, I just don't, like, <laughs> um, so, again, the streaming has been kind of nice, because it's given me a reason to just, to just play, like, just to use it, like, it's here, I might as well, um, so, but what basically my bottom line is, like in a in a home, uh, the machine's just not going to get used nearly as much, or as or likely nearly as hard as it will be in an arcade, and they tend to like, if they were in good condition to start, or you cleaned it up like I did to make it in decent condition, um, yeah, it it's relatively trouble free. Like I have not. The only thing that I, I have uh, an issue with right now is, um, uh, like, you can see, um, like, uh, if I stand here, uh, yeah, you can, you can kind of see that, like, freezes don't necessarily hold that great. Um, and I could work on it. I, I like... What I need to do is essentially tape mod it, but replace the the foam padding that's on top of the L brackets. I'm sure would fix that up or just just fine. Uh, and again, I'm just kind of lazy and I don't feel like doing it. Like it works well enough. <laughs> so since I'm not expecting to like get high scores, cool. As long as it doesn't make me fail, I'm fine. <sighs> all right. So I think that was all of the questions. Oh, I actually. You know, I didn't even realize that that was uh, a mix of two of you. Um, uh, GE Kennan and SFJ Variety. SFJ, I've recognized as having watched before. Um, G Kennan, I, I don't recognize you, so either I just wasn't paying attention or welcome if this is your first time. Cool, thanks. Um, anyway, let me... I have literally just been talking for the last what 10 minutes or something like that 15 minutes 
some amount of minutes, many minutes. Um, so let me actually see if I can get through this mission. And uh, yeah. <laughs> What was I doing? Oh yeah, I have to get between like two and a half million and three million, but not fail. Man, this is... <laughs> Anybody have any advice? Like, hit these steps, do a thing? Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of struggling with this one, really. Do I just like? Good attack it, maybe? Is that a thing? <laughs> Basically, I'm either scoring too quickly and going over the three million, or I'm losing too much life and failing out. So, I, I mean, I'm sure that's the point. Like, that's the challenge, right? But, I'm just not, not really clear on what or how much to hit to land within the target. Did I hit like every other B or... So I can skip this one. I'm gonna skip this one for a little bit because it's it's just kind of annoying. You only have Supernova Two USA. Okay. Well. I will struggle with that later. If your dance gauge runs out, it's game over. Oh, that's. Oh, that is really mean. <laughs> uh, I That's less annoying, but maybe actually more difficult than the last one. I like that though. That's that's funny. Like it, It's it's like, "Oh yeah, this chart's not that hard." And then I'm like, "Oh wait, the arrows aren't in the right places and brain is broken." Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Concentrate. That makes like the the corners not only are they like out of place, but they're also like positioned in like the opposite way that they would normally look and so man, all of that was just like, whoa. Alright, well I brute forced my way through that one. <laughs> so how far does this go a race? 
Why would you do that? Don't get bad grades. Got it. Why is that easier? I don't know. For what, I guess there's no like jumps and corners, so that was probably what makes that easier. But like that was definitely like tripped me a couple times, but for the most part, not that hard. I am noticing that I am providing a lot more commentary while I'm playing than I normally do. Oh, that... <laughs> so, like, slow songs don't bother me at all. Like, that's totally not a problem. Um... Like I said before, like starting on first mix and DDR USA, well, first mix of course. Like one X flat, that's all you had. So if it was slow, you just dealt with it. Now, obviously, stuff like bag, like that are just like intentionally extra super slow <laughs> to make everything just a giant, you know, solid wall of arrows. Then yeah, I. I have to mod those up a little bit to kind of read it um, but stuff like that not that big of a deal although the fact that it actually slowed the song like the audio down that's funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't step on up step on other arrows or chair sanitation okay Don't step on. So this is, if I recall, ooh, okay, that's not as easy as I thought it was gonna be. However, I was gonna say, if I recall, Solo had a three arrow mode, I think, which was like the 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 two diagonal arrows in the corners at the top, and then the the down arrow. Um, so I guess that's what this is sort of like. Like, trying not to hit those up arrows, that's, that's tricky. Antonio says, you should play the Disney Channel version again by unlocking the new outfits. What do you mean? Like, I should play Disney Channel again enough to unlock all of the outfits that it had? I, <laughs> to be honest with you, like, that particular mix, it, it wasn't that, wasn't that fun. Like, it was okay. And, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit I'm I'm actually kind of too old for uh, to have watched literally any of those shows. Uh, not that I had Disney Channel anyway, but <laughs> but even if I had, like I just like none of those shows are shows that I've ever watched um, the, that were included on that mix. So like none of that music is really familiar to me. Um, so there's there's no nostalgia factor there, and as a game, it's like. I mean, it's DDR, but 
it was it was only okay like it, it didn't didn't really do it for me so I um, go ahead and clarify what you mean as far as unlocking the new outfits I think what you mean is just play it more until I've unlocked everything um, uh, I, if that's what you mean I'm kind of not kind of disinterested just because it wasn't it wasn't fun enough that I really want to jump back into that game again um, plus you know I've got I've got I'm, I'm only on extreme I've still got extreme 2 and supernova and supernova 2 and x and like i've still got a bunch more games to play and then i was going to try and play like the european mixes and um i i have a bunch of the japanese uh mixes but the reality is most of those are just kind of like clones of the arcade so i don't feel a strong desire to play very many of those I, i'll take a look at them but um and see if they have features like like this like mission mode um maybe i'll play through that kind of thing on the japanese mixes but otherwise um the the japanese home mixes they don't seem to really have anything that's that's unique if i already have the corresponding um arcade mix which in general i do so if i wanted to just play that then i would just play the arcade one right because why wouldn't you <laughs> but Anyway, all right, I am ignoring us. I got farther that time. I... All right, I'm, I'm almost getting this. I think that was exactly the same place that I failed the first time, uh, the last time, previous time. Okay. Yeah, my brain just went away. We just went on vacation there. Goodbye. Let's skip this one too. Hold on. My knee hurts for some reason. That's cool. <laughs> I think I like hyper extended it there for a second, like, like doing some weird stutter stuff. I was like, ah, uh, nice.
Oh man. It might be about time for me to just quit in general. Make sure, like, I'm not gonna just like lose this knee. Hello, ow. <laughs> yeah, I think I just like bent it backwards, like trying to either miss one of the ups or quickly hit one of the other steps or something like that. Like, I just landed on it wrong, like an idiot. Cool. Well, that's uh, being old and fragile, I guess. <laughs> All right. Anyway, when did you say? What are my favorite DDR mixes? Why don't you try covering the up arrow with something hard? It's, I mean, I guess I could do that. Um, it seems, it seems hard. I will say that if you're familiar with uh, Space Channel Five at all, um, the the final level where it reverses everything, where like left is right, right is left, up is down, all that kind of stuff. I literally just turn the controller upside down and play it that way. It's like, is that cheating? Maybe. <laughs> but it's definitely easier than me trying to like translate in my head on the fly. Um, as far as favorite DDR mixes, uh, I would say probably like, I love fourth mix plus. Um, simply because it contains almost everything that had been in DDR up to that point. Um, so uh, all of the songs I grew up on, so to speak, like they're all there, um, or most of them, most all of them are there. So like I, I like that. I like that mix a lot. Um, the interface is a little bit of a struggle. Uh, but man, the content is just so good. So um, <laughs> when I say the interface is a little bit of a struggle, I just mean like the menu is kind of slow and clunky. Uh, you know, the game still runs at 30 frames a second. Mm, uh, all of that stuff. But otherwise, like solid. Uh, fifth mix, I, I I love fifth mix. Also, I think I'm a little bit you know biased because that's my machine came as a fifth mix. So like that's sort of special to me but also fifth mix i i feel like while it lost a lot of songs going from fourth plus into fifth it added a lot of really cool unique songs um many of which like never came back um and are you know unique to fifth and that's cool um but then interface wise with the song wheel and you know 60 frames a second and all that kind of stuff like it very much established what ddr would be for a very long time forward like i don't think they changed that the the basics of that interface until like i know ddr like 2013 2014 did um x i think was still using basically that same you know song wheel look and all that like even then i don't know about x2 i, I want to say x2 or x3 one or both of those i think had the different like the you know cover flow type menu or whatever so Anyway, what I, all I'm saying is <laughs> Fifth Mix established what would be kind of the DDR UI for many years and many mixes to come. Um, and I like it. Like, I, I'm used to it. Like, it worked. It worked well. It was, you know, it was fast and it worked and it looked all right. So, cool. So, yeah, Fourth Plus, Fifth Mix, I think, are probably one and two, maybe. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, that's what I'll say. I'll say that for now. Um, just thinking about it. Uh, 
And like I said, that's not to say I don't like other other mixes. Uh, honestly, yeah, <laughs> I'll I will take this opportunity to say I don't actually like Extreme very much. Um, it it is almost I almost never have it running in my machine, um, and uh, I just don't I don't love it. Uh, they crammed a lot of content onto what was still a CD back then, uh, and especially when you're in a house as opposed to like in an arcade where it's noisy and there's a lot of other stuff going on like it does not sound good like extreme sounds pretty bad because <laughs> they compressed the hell out of all of it all of the audio to get it onto that cd um and then the other thing was since extreme you know like i said before like we got extreme uh i think it was the end of 2002 beginning of 2003 and then we didn't get um, supernova until 2005 so you know we had two two and a half years of no new ddr and so everybody was playing extreme for that whole time for the most part and honestly i just got sick of it like i just saw it too damn much i was just tired of it um and then of course even to even flash forward to today most machines that you know most first gen machines if they didn't get upgraded to supernova they're probably still playing extreme so it, it's just it's too common like i just got sick of it is really what it comes down to uh so yeah like extreme not not really not really my jam i'd, I'd rather play max too <laughs> so uh oh wow you guys are being chatty tonight that's cool i appreciate that why are the Bimani PCs in the first generation, second generation? Why are the lights so bright? You think the lights are so bright? I mean, I I guess I had never noticed. Uh, like I said, I haven't played. Um, I, I haven't played X and Beyond uh, in my cabinet very much. I, just a little bit um, here and there. I hadn't noticed that the lights were any brighter there uh, honestly there's no way for them to be brighter um unless you've like modded out your cabinet because like they're just i think 20 watt um halogen bulbs uh and the all the all the game can do is turn them on or turn them off so they're as bright as they can get when they're on um the only thing I can think of that you might be saying is maybe uh, DDRX leaves them on longer and that makes it feel brighter. Um, and that's certainly possible. Uh, I would imagine that probably what's going on is they were programming the light channels for the, the, the new black cabinets with the light spires and all of that. And so um, those were all LED. They probably did like set, um, they probably did set them up to keep those on longer um to give it a better effect with the leds uh and they maybe didn't like tune it back for the legacy cabinets i don't know i would have to like play one of those mixes and and kind of give it a look it, it's been like i said i haven't done it much and it's been too long so like from memory what you're describing i think i kind of understand maybe but i, I just don't i don't know <laughs> i don't know that's the answer <laughs> So, all right, let me give this, uh, did I, oh, I did pass this. That's right. <sighs> Clear with more than 5 million. So what horrible thing are you going to do for me? Oh, 5X? just made it that is so yeah all of that like um like sudden or 
super high speed stuff, anything where like I don't have a very long time to react to seeing the arrow to actually hitting it uh, definitely makes me kind of like, you know, move jerky. And uh, uh, I think that's how I just hurt my knee. And so that was not pleasant either. <laughs> We'll see how I can see how much of this, how much more of this I can do, but I'm probably, gosh, I've been going, well, I guess it's, it's only been like an hour and a half, so. Clear with a full combo. Okay. Well, assuming they don't give me crazy mods, that shouldn't be too hard. Oh. Okay, uh, just for, for one second here, um, I assume exit is select, which it has been everywhere else. Select the spot. Yeah. Okay. I just want to look at the mod menu in regular play for a second, because I, I can't, I, I, I know as soon as I see it, I'll be like, oh yeah. But I just don't remember what that Select stupid thing is called. Single play. Select character. Select music. Select option. Okay. So, oh, okay, boost was the accelerating um, mode. Got it. That's right. I remember now. Uh, hidden Sun Stealth. Yeah, okay, that's not what I'm looking for. Other. Little Flat Solo Dark. 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 That's the no arrows. No arrow containers, I mean. Okay. So, boost and dark were the... Um, the mods that I couldn't remember the names of earlier. First thing. At least we answered that. I'm gonna play a normal song, just <laughs> to take a break for a second. <laughs> and since I'm already here. just stopped thinking at the end there apparently it's a new record cool all right that's that's so enough that of that. okay let me look at the chat again there is ddr max 2 cabinet three hours away from you sitting in an arcade collecting dust with warning message what's what's the warning message um, uh, asking you, considering, um, hold on, let me, oops. Is there a, is it a record? Somewhere it's quiet and we'll stay. Here, good. 
Okay. I So, just real quick, I, I can definitely feel my knee is just a little bit wonky. It's like, obviously, I can still play, so it's not, like, badly injured or anything, but it's it, it's probably a bad idea for me to keep going. So, I'm going to stop playing for now. Um, but I will uh, chat with you here in the... Or I'll answer some more questions and, and chat for a little bit longer. Um, but I am coming up, looks like, about 15 minutes away from, from two hours. So, like, at that point, if <laughs> either when the questions run out or I hit two hours, I think I'm just going to go ahead and stop the stream. But um, definitely, thanks for uh, showing up and, and, and thanks for participating. Like, seriously, I, I really appreciate it because, uh, like I said, even if it's just virtual, it's nice to just have people to hang out with and talk about stuff. Like, whatever. Um, and, uh, uh, like I said, I didn't, I, I did not advertise this stream at all in advance. I didn't really plan it. I just kind of jumped on. It was like, let's do it. So, um, I'm, I'm glad that some of you found me and, and, uh, had some things to say. So that was, that made it fun. Uh, as far as this max two cabinet, uh, you're considering asking the arcade owner to buy it. Do I think it's a good idea? I mean, sure, why not? Uh, it certainly doesn't hurt to ask. Um, let me, I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna sit in my windowsill here. <laughs> uh, I can I can feel as, as the, uh, as I go a little bit longer, like this knee is starting to be like more mad. So yeah, like I said, probably a good time for me to stop maybe find an ice pack after this but uh, <laughs> man I'm feeling like a frail old man or something here I just botched my knee up um, <laughs> anyway uh, yeah I, I mean obviously I, I don't know how much you've been looking for a machine or where you've been looking for a machine or anything like that but um, yeah. Uh, I didn't understand that. Wow, apparently my phone thought I was talking to it. Um, shut up. Go away. <laughs> um, but obviously, you know, whatever. I, I'm kind of curious what you what you said that there's a warning message. I, I, I'm curious what that warning message is because uh, depending on what it is, I, um, you know, it could... It, it might be a reason to either not buy it or pay less for it. Because um, it, it could be nothing. It could be like, oh, you know, flip the switch and it works again. Uh, or it could be uh, something very difficult to replace is broken. I don't know. Again, without knowing what the, what the warning actually is, uh, it's hard to say. But uh, yeah, definitely, you know, kind of look around and... and you know, make sure that that, that it's in, uh, it, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely nice, uh, that it's actually like, I mean, I guess three hours is not close, but it's close ish. Um, but having the opportunity to go and look at it in person, uh, certainly you can assess its condition a little bit better than you would be able to by looking at pictures on the internet. Um, but, uh, you know, just kind of see what conditions it's in and, you know, look at other machines and see what, you know, what kind of prices they're going for and, and, you know, make sure that, uh, whatever you're, whatever he's asking for it or whatever you're offering for it is, uh, uh, you know, a decent, a decent deal. Uh, it's, it's really hard to say cause like, it's such a weird thing with um with machines okay. because good oh, no. lord phone please stop listening whatever you're doing <laughs> um but the the very the goofy thing about arcade machines is oftentimes if it's a if it's a machine actually in an arcade like actively there um and it's one that's not being played by anybody. Uh, a lot of arcades, and this is more historical 
because like obviously traditional arcades aren't really that common anymore um so i'm i'm kind of talking about you know 10 15 years ago information right now uh, but it, it still applies to some it still applies when it applies it just doesn't apply as often because there just aren't really normal arcades very much anymore but what i was going to say is um if it if there's a art if there's a machine in an, in actively in an arcade that people aren't playing like oftentimes it's in the arcade operator's best interest to get that thing the hell out of there because it's taking up space on his floor or her floor that is um and and not making money so um they they want to get it gone to get something else in that people will play you know that people will put their quarters in or put their tokens in but you know so many arcades now are you know uh are where you're you know you're you're doing card swipes or you're paying admission to come in for you know an hour or several hours or whatever like that and so the performance of an individual game i think matters a little bit less than it used to so that's why i'm saying that advice maybe isn't great um but absolutely um i have had some experiences in the past where you know uh an arcade machine wasn't making money for that arcade and you go in and you say or or you know they either list it for sale um or you go in and ask them like would you be willing to sell this and the amount that they sell it for is like surprisingly cheap um like i think my dance maniacs cabinet when i bought it again this was probably 15 years ago or so um gosh i think i paid 600 bucks for it like and now you can't even find them so like if you do want if you want dance maniacs now like you're trying to get it from somebody who you know realizes that probably realizes that they have something vague like sort of rare and you're probably not going to get it for very cheap so there's there's that but uh but yeah i mean absolutely um uh it, it's worth it's worth asking like worst thing they can do is say no or say they want you know eight thousand dollars for it and then you're just like well okay never mind <laughs> but uh yeah um basically it, it's it's like it's like buying a it's like buying a car you know um do some research ahead of time and get an idea for what it's worth and that way you know something reasonable to offer so you're not insulting the seller um, and then also, if the seller comes at you with something unreasonable, you know to walk away. Because um, it's all about it's all about knowledge. Like if you know what you're talking about and they know what they're talking about, then you'll probably come to a reasonable agreement. If one of you has no idea what they're talking about, um, either there's probably not going to be a deal, or one of you is going to get screwed very badly. <laughs> so that's my advice. <laughs> um, let's see oh you said uh oh when is the next stream um i don't know because i don't i don't plan that well um <laughs> someday i will get to the point where maybe i'm on some sort of regular schedule i i have lately at least been trying to like earlier in the day schedule it and say like hey i'm gonna stream later today um uh and set that up on youtube so i i don't know if you get in that I, do you get a notification for, about that if I schedule a stream or it shows up in your feed or something like that? I don't know. Um, but I have been doing that at least, um, you know, a couple hours in advance, except not today. Like today I was just like, let's go. Like I, I literally didn't even, didn't even post it on my own Facebook. I was just like, boom, here I am. <laughs> Hopefully people find me cool. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, uh, I, I'll try and give you some notice. Um, if you see it through YouTube, um, but uh, I, I I don't know uh, exactly when the next one's going to be. Although um, I would imagine I'll probably be on this weekend um, at some point because I don't have any other plans. 
on the last two weekends have been well two weekends ago i was streaming because i was having you know like a special thing with um with some people and and I, if you saw that or if you see the archive stream that's cool um but then this last weekend i i was attending like a virtual convention so like i was busy the whole weekend just didn't really have time but this coming weekend i don't really have any other plans so i'm sure at some point i'll probably jump on um and like i said i'll try and think about it and and uh post a uh a post some kind of advance notice at least a, a couple hours so that maybe somebody will have a chance to you know, like prepare for it uh let's see warning message something about the machine not being able to boot up well that could that doesn't narrow it down a lot so um <laughs> uh yeah I, I that that could be a lot of things you said it's supernova two uh or oh no it's max two wow um yeah unfortunately only knowing that much that that can definitely encompass either anything from like a switch is in the wrong position flip it and then now it works to uh you know the cd-rom drive is busted or uh the flash card is busted or something on the board is busted you know unfortunately i can't really tell you um based only on that little bit of information i, I don't know um it, it could be no big deal at all or it could be a very big deal <laughs> um so if you could tell me what the actual like sorry if you could tell me what the actual um message was i, I might be able to give you a little bit better idea but um yeah uh, although to be fair, uh, if it's giving you a warning, it means that the problem lies somewhere likely in the uh, in the 573, in the actual system unit, and you can get those. You can get another one of those. They're usually like, what, three or $400, something like that. So like worst case scenario, you could probably get replacement hardware that would um, make it work again, or whatever is broken may be fixable but on those on those machines um yeah i mean some things are repairable not that big of a deal other things are um much harder to repair either because it takes you know like significant electronics skill um you know like with a soldering iron to replace those parts or in some cases like the parts are just hard to come by because again you're dealing with 20 plus year old um, computer hardware basically and some of that stuff they just don't make it anymore <laughs> so um, yeah there's that uh, you live in South Africa oh okay um, very rare once in a lifetime opportunity yeah um, I don't I know almost nothing about South Africa and I know absolutely nothing about DDR in South Africa so uh, I can't be a whole lot of uh, help on that. Although, if it's a place that you can at least like drive to, um, the one thing that you're that's in good that's a positive for you is that means that you can probably, if you have a truck or you can rent a truck, you can go and pick it up yourself and take it home, uh, and that is usually cheaper than getting it shipped. So there's that. Um, how much was my DDR machine? Okay, so my DDR machine, again, remember, I bought it in January of 2003. So 17 years ago, like when uh, DDR was, you know, <laughs> popular, like high popular. Um, so it was $4,700 at the time. So it was not cheap. It was a pretty good deal at the time. Um, it would be a very special first gen machine to command $4,700 today. Like I don't generally see them go for that much. Um, but although I guess with COVID they, they've gone up some, I've heard, I don't really watch the market that much. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not looking to buy one. So I, I see them occasionally, but I'm, I'm not looking. So I, I don't have the, the best, like most up-to-date data, but I know that 
that would be a pretty high price today for a first gen cabinet. Now, if you're looking at, you know, like a white cabinet or something like that, yeah, absolutely, it's going to be more than that. But, but yeah. So that's uh, that's that. And then let's see. The advice most definitely applies because the arcade where the machine is coin tokens is still being used. So, okay, yeah, um, great. Like I said, I I just I don't I don't know anything about um. I don't know anything about arcades or DDR in South Africa, um, but if it if it is like a you know a traditional arcade where people come in and you know buy tokens and put them in the machine, then uh, yeah, like if it's a well obviously if it's straight up not working, then it's clearly not making any money. Um, uh, you might be able to get a good deal on it simply because it's definitely not making money, and if it's not working. And it's been not working for a while they probably either don't know how to or don't care about fixing it um, so a it should be worth less worth less not worthless but <laughs> worth less because it is not working no matter what's wrong with it um, I mean you just <laughs> you should be able to take some money off for like hey it just doesn't work right um, and then uh, B, um, you, uh, I had a point B, but it went away. Uh, but yeah, it should be worth less since it's not working. And then B, it's obviously not making any money. So uh, now maybe they don't care about that floor space. Like maybe it's a really huge arcade and, you know, they can get something new in and just put it somewhere else and no big deal. But most of the time, you know, it's like, especially DDR, because, like, it takes up a lot of space. Um, and uh, if they can get it off their floor and probably get, you know, two machines in its place or four machines, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah. Um, from, a, from a logical standpoint, I think you should be able to get a good deal on it. Now, whether they are going to behave logically in that way, I have no idea. That's my, that's my two cents. So, okay. Anyway, uh, looks like uh, I've I've hit the two hour mark. Um, if you have, if anyone has any like last second questions that you want to like pop into the chat here, I'll I'll try and um, try and answer them. But uh, I think for the most part, I'm I'm gonna wrap this one up. And like I said, I I do appreciate you coming by and. And I especially appreciate people when they when they participate because it, it makes it a whole lot more fun, a lot more interesting um, for me. Again, like I said, I'm not awesome at this game, so I I hope you're not here to watch me like triple A a bunch of stuff because you're not going to see it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So if I can give you some kind of content that's you know funny or interesting to you in some other way. That's great. I, I'm all for it. So, uh, are there any mini maids that can be bought, or something similar? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, mini maids are hard to come by, but not impossible. Um, if you are actually looking for one, I can probably hook you up uh, with one, uh, some way. Um, and other people, you know, um, have them for sale too. Uh, there are other there are other products like it, but um, I don't know a ton about them. I've had a mini made for a very long time, um, so uh, I, I again, it's one of those I haven't been looking for them. But I I've I know of other products that are similar in that they but none that are quite the same like uh as far as all of the things that mini made does usually you're going to be buying at least two other things to be able to do um what mini made is able to do by itself um so i don't know of anybody who has made such a complete integrated solution the way mini made is yet um, but I know there's also some other products coming up on the horizon um, 
but again like i said i haven't been looking for them so i don't have a lot of details i don't even really remember the names exactly but but i know there are other things out there but if you actually do want a mini made you know drop drop me a message and i i can probably try and figure out um i i i know a guy <laughs> let's just say that <laughs> that that can probably uh make that happen if, if you actually are serious but it sounds like you need to get a machine first so you know no rush but uh all right well um i, I keep looking at my hand because i seem to have a splinter here which is weird because i don't know where that came from cool <laughs> well i am going to go ahead and uh uh close this up for now and uh like i guess get the splinter out and maybe put some ice on my knee and uh be a big baby for a little while and watch some tv so um as for next stream uh yeah probably sometime this weekend um i i wish i could be a little bit more specific but i i just i haven't planned that far yet so um i don't know what i'll do actually i i mean i guess um leave a comment and let me know like should i keep going in mission mode of extreme or should i just like bump over to extreme two, go to the next one um like i'm game for either so uh yeah anyway so uh, oh your does mini made read arcade game data to control the lights or does it respond to music uh mini made in and of itself is just an interface so it does basically whatever you whatever you tell it to do um it, but it definitely does have a mode where it uh where it just picks up what the arcade um software would be putting out to say you know flash these lights now whatever um so it is it is capable of essentially replacing the io hardware that's in a cabinet normally the, basically the interface between the PC and the, the cabinet so that it will just do whatever the cabinet is supposed to do. Or you can do custom stuff. Like this is custom stuff right now where it's taking audio in. Um, but actually the program that's doing it is, is running on the PC um, and then it's sending the commands over to the Minimaid to flash the lights in response. So uh, it's pretty flexible. But uh... Okay, well with that... Um... I've talked a lot. I can, I can feel my throat. I can feel my knee. I can feel the splinter. So, like I said, I'm gonna go <laughs> shut this off and be a baby for a while. But uh, thanks for uh, thanks for coming in and uh, chatting with me. And um, you know, any other questions you got, leave them in the comments. I'll try and take a look and answer any of them. So um, offline, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye. Good night. Or day, wherever you are.